Hello again. Today I want to talk a little bit about buoyancy and in particular how we might use that to create for ourselves a thermometer. And in fact some of you will have a thermometer like this in your house somewhere I'm sure. Well we need to start with um, a basic introduction to buoyancy. A key concept for us uh, is defining what we mean by the density of an object um, and that's relatively straightforward that's just its mass which we can measure in kilograms divided by its volume which we'll measure in cubic meters so surprise surprise density has units of kilograms per cubic meter. Um, a boat for instance is going to float we hope because it has a density that is less than water. Uh, and water, well, its density varies a little bit, but fresh water, for instance, uh, has a density that's somewhere approximately in the region of a thousand uh, kilograms per cubic metre. Um, Seawater, again, it varies depending on the um, salinity, but a reasonable value is a thousand and twenty five. Um, kilograms per cubic metre. Um, so as I say all we need is our boat whatever that's made of usually made of things that are actually more dense than water these days like steel um, but if its overall density including the air trapped inside uh, is less than the water it will float. If of course um, it springs a leak uh, and starts taking water in so in other words the air inside is being replaced by water then of course its density will go up and eventually um, our poor old boat will sink. Um, an addition I suppose that we could think about would be um, submarines uh, or equivalently actually uh, we could think about fish um, because of course they can control their buoyancy they can go up or down and actually submarines and fish do it in exactly the same way uh, in principle fish have uh, something inside called a swim bladder which is an organ inside their body uh, submarines um, so here's our submarine very elegantly done I'm sure you'll agree uh, they have buoyancy tanks um, situated uh, in them and the principle is the same they can change their density in other words they can go up or down in the water in the case of the submarine float or sink uh, simply by uh, either filling these with air or allowing them to um, in the submarine case to flood with water in the case of the fish they simply sort of squash it flat inside their body um, and that changes of course the overall density of the fish and of the submarine it's either got uh, some gas trapped inside it in which case its overall density is reduced or it hasn't in which case its density is higher uh, and it will tend to sink whether an object sinks or floats in water or indeed any other fluid uh, depends on a balance of uh, forces. So we have a force I suppose that we can just label buoyancy which is tending to push it up and that's 
associated with this sort of uh, equation here and of course what's drawing it down uh, into the fluid is simply uh, the action of gravitational attraction, the gravitational force. And it's a balance between these two that determines whether we've got something that sinks or floats. And that's the driving principle uh, behind what we want to look at this morning. The object that I want to um, take a look at this morning uh, is actually something called the Galileo thermometer. Uh, and this was actually developed by um, uh, Galileo Galilei sometime in the early 1600s. Uh, it's simple, it's actually a fairly accurate thermometer if it's properly set up in the first place. The one we're going to see in the video clips here was a present to my wife and I from our children. Now a Galileo thermometer is actually relatively um, straightforward in its design. Uh, it'll be a glass tube, usually with a sealed off glass um, spout as it were at the top uh, and then inside it's going to be almost full uh, with a liquid which usually uh, is water but it doesn't have to be. Up here there'll be a cavity containing air All right, and that's actually quite important as we shall see. Now within this volume there are going to be some uh, glass bubbles essentially. There'll be a whole series of them in here. Uh, they're all hand-blown and so they have slightly different shapes and sizes but they are um, made to have slightly less density than the water around them uh, by adding coloured fluid in here. Usually it's just water with a bit of uh, dye in. Sometimes it can be uh, it can be an alcohol mix but again simply different colours. But the key thing then is that they'll have little labels attached to the bottom uh, with numbers on. Numbers corresponding to temperature, degrees centigrade usually. Uh, and the weight of these little metal discs is what does the fine tuning in the end for the overall density of each of these bubbles. So what we have are bubbles now with slightly differing densities and it's these little weights that have been hung on the bottom uh, that have done that fine tuning. They're all as I say quite close to the density of the surrounding uh, water but changed a little bit by uh, as I say these these counterweights. So remember we have this competition of forces going on. We have buoyancy um, that's pushing these up as it were, causing them to float. We have the effect of gravity uh, which is what's attempting to pull them down all the time. Now what happens to make this thermometer work uh, is that as we heat or cool the water inside this tube here it expands or contracts. And that's the reason for having air at the top, of course. All gases, air included, are highly compressible. So the glass container, and indeed the glass that makes up these little uh, bubbles inside, is not really not going to change in size very much over uh, um, a few tens of degrees. So it stays as a fixed volume, and these stay as a fixed volume. Uh, and therefore these have uh, densities that don't change, uh, as I say, over a few tens of degrees at least, um, they stay the same. But the density of this water does change. It changes because it can either expand or contract 
the compressible gas at the top of the tube. So as we warm the water up um, and decrease the density of this water, then one by one these calibrated floats will actually begin to sink. Gravity will win in this balancing act. And that's exactly what we're going to see uh, in the clip that follows. OK, so we've put our um, Galileo thermometer in sunshine now. There are two floats down at the bottom already. And the lowest of the ones at the top is labelled 22 degrees centigrade. So having sat it in the sun, I'm going to leave it for a while now to warm up. And now, as you can see, the sun has warmed the fluid inside and another float has gone down to the bottom and the label on the one, the yellow one now near the top, says 24 degrees. So what we saw then when I put the Galileo thermometer on the window still initially uh, is that it was indicating a uh, a particular temperature uh, it was indicating that room temperature around it was about 22 degrees centigrade after i'd left it in direct sunlight inside the window for a while one of the weights fell down and in fact the label on the float then left at the top was 24 degrees centigrade uh, and in fact, all I showed you was extremes. So uh, one of the bubbles at the top and then all the way down to the bottom. Of course, depending on where that float was uh, in the tube of, of liquid, we could actually have produced a much finer gradation of scale in, in the middle. And it's relatively easy, I think, by eye almost, uh, to measure the temperature um, around the glass thermometer to much better than two degrees, usually to about half a degree, uh, if, you, um, if you really put your mind to it, as it were. So that's it for now. I'll see you next time.